I'm not normally one to say don't read a book or slate a book or not recommend a book, but I just think you can spend your hours on something else. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am not doing a proper professional video or anything. I'm filming on my phone and in my bedroom because quite frankly, I can't be bothered. Um, so today I'm doing a review of the six books that I read in January 2021. I had quite a successful month, I feel, to have read six books in one month. But in terms of the books that I read, I don't have a very good month. So the first book that I read was Peach by Emma Glass. This was weird. It was small, so it was manageable, but if it was any longer than that, I would have had to stop reading. So after every book, I've been keeping a little journal of like what I thought of each book. On this one, I basically put, it's a small book, so it's easy to read, like it's quick to read, but it's just confusing and I put loads of question marks because there's minimal punctuation, so you're not sure when someone's talking. Now it's about, so trigger warning, it's about sexual assault and rape and the after effects of it, which normally I'd be quite fascinated about, but this was, it, it was hard to tell what's real and what's like fantasy or in her head or flashbacks. And so it just, it was just confusing in a way. And then the ending is just like weird, in my opinion. It, I don't, I, I feel like there was a lot of metaphors in it that just weren't working to be honest and I read a load of reviews afterwards as well to be like what and a lot of people say the same so I'm glad I'm not the only one that thought that so yeah I was slightly disappointed but there you go next one I read was Jenny Diskey's Ingratitude it looks to be honest like quite a boring cover but it was quite interesting it's about someone who was suffering with cancer and was told they had a couple of years to live and so started documenting almost like a cancer diary but not. It's called Ingratitude I think almost because the author is not grateful. The author from the age of about 14 I think is moves in with another author called Doris Lessing so if you know Doris you'll know that this is about her. The first part of it, the first half of it I really really enjoyed it was about her relationship moving in with this other author because her parents had basically kicked her out and this author had written a letter to her and was like, yeah, I'll take you in, which seems like a crazy idea, a stranger, they hadn't met or anything, but quite an interesting concept and obviously it's a true story, so it's from Jenny's account of it, um, which kind of makes it biased, but there you go. And then the other half of it, um, it's called Chemo and Me, so it's kind of about that and I didn't enjoy that as much, to be honest. I, I, in a way, it was kind of nice because it was like you're reading two stories at once. It was honest and it was funny. Um, the author uses wit and different like comedic effects, which was quite nice to read. It made it quite light-hearted. So although they were talking about quite serious topics like cancer, it was quite like an easy read. Sadly, the author died a week after the book's publication, but I think that kind of makes it even more important and some of the messages in there. So then the notes that I put on it is I just liked it to be more split up and into more chapters because it is literally just Doris and me and Chemo and me. Um, and then I think it's part one, Doris and me, part two, Chemo and me, and then part three, Spray It Silver. I can't actually remember why it's called Spray It Silver, but so it's in three parts. and. I'm one of those people that I would rather read a book that has a hundred chapters in it rather than three chapters. I quite like to feel like I've achieved something after I've read another chapter. Then we move on to my favourite book of the month which is the Burnout Survival Kit and on the 5th of February I'm going to be posting an exclusive interview with the author Imjin Dahl who talks about her writing this book and what it's about and why she wrote it etc. Um, it says this book provides instant relief from modern work and it absolutely does. It's not like a novel or anything. It's got pictures in it. There's not a lot of writing. So, I mean, I read this in a day, but absolutely necessary for anyone that has a job in any industry. So I really, really enjoyed that one and what left me feeling like more uplifting, more uplifted. It's relatable. There was personal examples from Imogen herself. It's talking about the modern day, working from home, etc. And then the things that I didn't think would apply to me at the time as well. So things like money struggles were at the moment I'm in a financially stable position. I still read those chapters and they were still quite insightful and helpful in a way. The next one that I then read was this small one by David Chariandi, Chariandi called Brother. I did, I enjoyed this one actually. I think, yeah, this was probably my second favorite after Burnout Survival Kit. Um, funnily enough, it was about two brothers. 
It covers race, family and grief, which is really important subjects. It's easy to follow and I feel like the two main characters were really well developed, which was quite nice to see as well. So yeah, so it explores the relationship of these two brothers and their mother and the community that they live in. It's realistic and it's it's true read. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I recommend that one. I, I enjoyed that one. Then I had Normal People. Boring people. I don't get it. I don't get the hype. Why do people like it so much? I just... I went into this with my expectations low. I knew that it was a Marmite book, so people either love it or they hate it. So I kept my, you know, my expectations low. I was like, you know what, I might not like this, but that's fine. And yet it still somehow disappointed me. I just... Nothing happened, in my opinion. Like, nothing happened. There's no um, exclamation... Uh, blah, blah. There's no speech marks in it so you don't know when they're talking which confuses me because it takes me twice as long to go back and be like oh that was someone talking realizing what they said um it's about two characters who are in love with each other and they just go through their life still trying to get with each other and then moving on with their lives and then get back together and then moving on and then get back together and it's i just just nothing happened and it was boring and what i didn't like as well is each chapter let's see if i can find it yet yeah, it'd be like two months later next one would be like seven months later next one would be like five months later it's like what happened in between that like i want to know like it doesn't really give it much context it's just by saying two months later i want to see how things have changed and i'm not normally one to say don't read a book or slate a book or not recommend a book but i just think you can spend your hours on something else you can spend your hours on a better book so yeah i was quite disappointed on this i read this along with my gal Portia, and she thought the exact same thing so and I'm not alone in this. Also, I put a tweet out and lots of people saying the same thing. So, I don't feel bad about saying this because of the fact that I know a lot of people think the same. But, yeah, so disappointed with that one. And then lastly, I read Justice on Trial by Chris Dorr. Radical Solutions for a System at Breaking Point. Um, this one was interesting. It's about the criminal justice system in the UK. And it's written by a criminal defence lawyer of about 25, 26 years, so has lots of experience. I wouldn't not recommend it, but I also wouldn't recommend it. If someone said they were going to read it, I'd be like, cool, that's fine, I wouldn't tell them not to. But if someone didn't read it, I don't think you're missing out that much. I don't know if that's, like, that's complete opposites. But I don't regret reading it, put it that way, because I did learn some things. The way in which it was written, I didn't necessarily uh resonate with that much um so it's split into five parts it's a short story of crime and punishment why we should close all prisons so why we should close all prisons that's such a um a strong kind of statement saying like we should close all prisons and i just think there needed to be more of an argument behind it and it's however many pages 60 pages long on talk about prisons and I didn't really get much of an argument out of it. I, I wanted there to be more convincing points and I felt that all chapters as well. The next one is why we should legalise drugs. Next one is why we should why children are never criminals. And then finally, why people are neither good or evil. Some interesting points and I think they're valid considering the author has a lot of experience being a criminal justice lawyer, but some of the things are quite far-fetched, like the solutions um, and don't necessarily take into account some exceptions i think a couple of points were interesting like the main solution for closing down prisons is basically keep everyone on house arrest so have them trapped so as soon as they leave the house you know and police can be on to them etc but there's so many logistics to think about it that i just i don't know maybe that's kind of me being naive and just giving into the fact that prisons should still be Okay, my phone just ran out of story so i'm just gonna have to quickly summarize i just feel like with this book it had some strong points but needed backing up a bit more and could have been summarized in half the book. it's quite a chunky book so could have been a bit smaller so they were the six books that i read in 20 2010? they were the six books that i read in january 2021 let me know if you read any of them have different opinions to me um what you were reading etc because i would love to hear it thank you for watching bye